Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, along with the coach, and welcome to this week's show. We'll take a look at that Washington State victory and also preview next week's big game against Arizona State as the Ducks right in the thick of the Rose Bowl race. Be joined later in the program from one of the stars of uh, yesterday's big win and uh, plenty more in store for you the rest of the show. Well, congratulations, coach. You said when you took over the job, your first goal each and every year was to have a winning season. Well, with the sixth win of the year, you have ensured that, and it's just a building block, block for hopefully bigger things to come. Well, it was a very important game for us. Big game. Uh, Washington State was tied with us in the conference race. Uh, it meant if we won that game, it would be a winning season. That's always our first goal. And I think very important to separate ourselves from the other people in the world that way. Um, and it was a great defensive game uh, by both teams. But certainly our defense stepped up, scored points for us, uh, took control of the game. And I, I'm really happy with the way we played. And certainly people like Paul Jensen and Isaac Walker made some big, big plays. The game didn't start out uh, on a positive note for Oregon as Washington State got the opening kickoff, drove the ball down the field for a touchdown, made it look easy. You were three and out. And then in that next series, the big play as far as uh, your defense was concerned early, Jensen's interception. It seemed to, to get your team back into the uh, ball game, seemed to get the crowd back into it, and took a little life out of Washington State. It was a big momentum shift. I mean, uh, they had been driving. Uh, we looked. Uh, a little lethargic on the first series, obviously, and didn't get much going offensively. Paul steps in, and, and I don't think the quarterback saw him, really. I watched the film of it, but he does a great job. He's an overachiever, if you want to call it that. Uh, just a great young man. I'm very glad for him because he made that big play and did turn things around at that point. As it turned out, your defense outscored uh, everybody else that took the field. The defense came up with 12 points, a special teams, a couple of field goals, extra point. The offense only with a one touchdown, but it was enough. It was enough, right? You know, we, we did not play well offensively. We didn't throw the ball as well as we needed to. We knew that they played a basically a nine-man reading front, so you got a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. But we didn't. We weren't able to throw and catch uh, last night as well as we were capable of, I think. Uh, it's good to sit here and say that we won, not playing our best football game. But certainly special teams stepped up. The defense did a great job, certainly, late in the game. And we, we started off slow on defense, too. We left some people open, and, and there are things confused us at times. But we overcame that. Uh, I think some good coaching and some good individual efforts by our players. Two areas that had been a concern for you uh, part of the year, uh, the turnovers. You really did a nice job in this department. Five turnovers created by your defense. Two go for touchdowns on the interceptions. And also your special teams, that kickoff return team, did a great job. I thought Brewer did a nice job with the kickoffs and his placement. And you almost recovered two onside kicks, in essence. Right. We have the pooch kick, and it was very good for us. Uh, Matt did a great job kicking it off. We practiced. We brought him back this past week because he had looked best in practice. It worked. We did almost get one. We did get the other, Ronnie Gibson. And it, it kept their uh, return team off balance. And I think it was, it was very good for us to see. We also got some great coverage, great hits. Uh, Jerome Perry makes a big hit. And those are the kind of things that fire people up, fire the defense up, fire the whole team. I think uh, talking to many of the fans after the game, uh, it was almost a sense of relief uh, knowing that Washington State it was a good team. They have a great defense, and it's almost like uh, we're thankful to survive that one. I've said it before. Washington State uh, spreads you out on offense, does a lot of things that, that really isolate you, and you have to be heads up. The other thing is they have a great defense. They did a nice job with it. They, uh, they are as good. They reloaded very well. We talked about one of the greatest defenses we played against last year. They haven't fallen off very much despite replacing eight starters. Well, we'll get to the highlights momentarily. Let's check out the Pac-10 scoreboard. It was a a good day, I guess, for a scoreboard watching if you are an Oregon fan. You can see the Huskies starting to roll it up. They are undefeated in conference play, 31-17 over Arizona. They forced five turnovers and scored once defensively as well. California scored first and last, and it was good enough to defeat Oregon State in Corvallis, 13-12, first conference win of the year for the Golden Bears. UCLA trailed 21-7 at halftime down on the farm, but Kareem Abdul-Jabbar exploded for 261 yards rushing on 42 carries, four touchdowns as the Bruins come from behind to shock Stanford, and USC suffers its first loss of the year, a non-conference game, but it might have implications in the Rose Bowl race a little bit later on. Notre Dame prevailing 38-10. to Arizona State, Oregon's next opponent, had the week off. More about them a little bit later on, but let's get to the highlights. Homecoming for the Ducks, the 100th year of Oregon football. Great festivities all weekend. It was great. That's great tradition. It's great to see those people come back. I met people that played in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 70s, 80s, and it's great because there's a lot of tradition, a lot of hopes that are riding with us and their dreams and everything, and it fired our guys up. 
toe. You can see the opening kickoff, pretty good coverage, and the Cougars take over. This was a very impressive drive uh, after this play as they uh, mix the pass and the run very nicely. Rich Rule and Brian Crown step up very nicely in that first play. We get Reggie overruns us a little bit, and then Kenny slips and actually screens a couple of our players, and their back gets outside, and has got great speed. Brian Collins makes a saving tackle there. But they, they got off us. We had to catch up to the speed factor early. Back to Madhu, who ended up with over 100 yards. I think he had 59 on this drive. Right. They ran sort of an isolation on the weak side, and, and uh, Isaac Walker had to make the hit. Touchdown saving tackle right there. Come back, and again, good job of running. They're, they're holding us up, and he's, he's picking his holes very well. And a little bit later on, first and goal, Davis rolls, and uh, boy, perfect strike to Thomas right yeah. there in the corner. Great job. They had put in their backup quarterback, Ryan Leaf, who has a 37-inch vertical jump. He's 6'5", and they were going to throw the fade to him on the other side. We covered it, came back, and, and just couldn't stay with the other guy. So the point after is good, and the Cougars have uh, jumped out on top. Well, the Ducks get it, can't move it. The Cougars get it back. And a big play here. Big play here. Paul Jensen, you see him sneaking out of there, picks it off, catches it clean, and then out races. Even Frank Madu to the end zone. That's a great job. Great play. Uh, yeah, turf's a little wet there, you know, on that side, but uh, again, just super anticipation. You see him right there in the throwing lane, almost a one-handed catch, uh, and then it's just a foot race, and again, he's not the fastest guy, but he's got tremendous desire, and I'm very happy for Paul. That's a big, big play for him. Get you right back in the game. Unfortunately, the point after gets blocked. We get way too much penetration on our right side. Uh, one of their young inside linemen who's about 6'6 six, six or 6'7, six, six, with that penetration, he was about eight feet tall, and unfortunately, he blocked that kick. So that makes it seven to six. And here, we want to show you some of this kickoff coverage this week. Because your uh, guys did a great job. Yeah, we did a great job with it there again. Uh, that's Jerome Perryman on the bottom right there. David Crump is in there with him helping. And uh, Matt Brewer did a nice job setting this stuff up. There's a big hit. And again, there's Crump coming in to finish it off. But great kicks with great hang time, which allowed us to cover very well. Again, we, we started getting a better feel, things on defense. There's our, both our ends, uh, Barnes and Bird com, uh, coming in on that one. Uh, great coverage here. And again, coverage sack with Bird and Reggie Jordan. Reggie pushing the pocket, and uh, Dez coming in from the other side. And again, as I say, you can sort of see this one is trying to throw one side. We've got it covered. Reggie's pushing the tackle back into his face and then just reach out, grabs him, says, hey, you're not going anywhere. That's a loss of 10. One of two sacks on the day for Reggie. Get the ball back. This is the grid pattern. And again, we get Dameron down the middle. They were very conscious of C. Mack, Kristen McLemore, and Dameron makes a nice catch, and Graz makes a nice throw. We were we overthrew a little bit. I've got to have the physicist check if uh, cool night air makes the ball go farther. But uh, uh, here, this is a perfect pass right on the money. Dameron, good concentration. There's two guys coming. Gets to the ball, hangs on, and big, big play. Now you have an opportunity to take the lead with a score. We're running the load off tackle. Uh, again, we get three. It, it was a tough night to run. They're a very good football team, and we knew we'd have to take our chances with some big plays. Here's a throwback to Blake Spence. He beats his man. Nice throw, perfect throw, nice score. Good to get on the board, get the lead back, uh, get a little confidence going on the offensive side. Good protection. Uh, nobody in Tony's face at all. He can set up, deliver the ball. And again, Blake's wide open. Nice extended catch. Gets in the end zone. The point after was a bit of an adventure after penalties on both teams on different plays. So this is like the third attempt. You decide just to kick the thing yeah, and go on. We were going to go for two. Uh, we get a penalty against them. Then we score. They get it against us. We move back 10 yards and figure we better just kick it. Let's get some points on the board. Come back another high kick. Great hang time. And again, Jerome Perryman. And I can't see who else, if I can see who that is coming in. Great help. And again, nice kick. We're getting off of blocks, a better understanding of exactly what we're doing now. See Jerome slide in there. Looks like uh, Wilcox coming in to finish it off. Derek Barnes also there. I'm really happy with that, that coverage and that team. We've improved dramatically over the course of the season. Here's a great job. Reggie Jordan, and I believe that's Asher Arule. Uh, I'm sure you'll see him flash through here. Oh, it's Collins. Brian Collins coming on the safety blitz. That's right. We had the safety blitz on there. So the next play, second down and 11 near the end of the quarter. And that's, uh, we had another safety on there and it took the blocking scheme. You can see Brian coming again and frees up uh, uh, Asher. They can't block him. They don't have enough people there. And he comes in untouched. 
So at the end of the first quarter, Oregon leading Washington State after being down 7 to nothing, 13 to 7. Well, we told you it was about time for the defenses to really take over control of the game. And as we begin the second quarter, immediately Washington State comes up with a big defensive play. In fact, it was their only turnover of the ball game. Well, Tony, we're going deep here, and he gets great protection. Actually, too much time, and he comes back to the deep receiver covered, and we, we don't want to throw it deep late. It's a great play by their guy. He outraces our guy for the play and makes an extended dive and catch. So you backed him up deep, and now the defense wants to hold, but this is uh, kind of a strange series for Washington State because they you'd force them to take one step back, and they'd yeah. take two steps forward. Well, it's a great job by B.J. and Lamont Woods. They're forcing the run, and... And uh, again, they, they did a nice job of mixing up the play calling here. B.J. slips off the interior block. Lamont comes up very well on the outside, stuffs that running play. And uh, you're right, we, we get what we want initially in terms of the first couple downs. So you put them in a third and seven. And they run the wide screen on us. We're, we just, uh, we're not quick enough to cover it inside. Uh, that's one of the dangers of dogging and blitzing, putting yourself in man coverage. Uh, nice job again there, good fill. Uh, Rich Rule coming inside. Uh, great job by Jeremy Asher that time, one-on-one -on -one tackle, which again I've said is the biggest thing this year. He's making those stops in the hole by himself. And again, we're, we're freeing him up. The, the scheme frees him up. The D-line is doing a great job of occupying linemen, so he's free to run to the ball. But uh, then on a third and 11, they are able to pick up the first down. Right, we're running a zone coverage here, and they run the drag the tight, the outside receiver underneath. Uh, and uh, we just aren't quick enough to pick him up in that regard. And we've got to alert ourselves. We don't play that much zone. And again, they run through a tackle here a little bit. That Madu is, uh, can sneak up on you quicker than the hiccup. I mean, he is, he is a quick little player. Not very big in their lineman. This is a great job by Brian Collins. Coming in on the blitz, breaking up the potential draw play. And again, you see he's going for the quarterback. But they put so much pressure on They're trying to run a draw or a little shovel pass. He breaks it all up and puts the ball on the ground. Great effort there. So a loss of... Four, you get it back, can't move it, here come the Cougs again. We blow up the, uh, the counter play and force it out to our rush lanes here. Again, good pressure by Jeremy, uh, throwing the ball away. This should have been grounding, I will say that right now. I will write that up, uh, and I didn't get the call. I was, on, I was a little mad about that. Here's Ricky, we finally popped him loose on a tackle trap up the middle. Probably most of the yards he gained was right there. They did a great job of keying on him. Tony Graziani on the option on a third and short yardage play. Did a nice job picking up the first down. We got some key first downs. We actually did better on third down than I thought. It didn't seem like it. Here's the wide screen to Dameron. Uh, trying to, again, they, we knew that they were covering Ricky, so we used him as a, as a decoy in that sense. Coming back, this is a nice throw by Tony. Good catch by Dameron. He's got he's to control the football. It's a great route. That ball was thrown like a dart. It went about 25, 30 yards on a rope and a big, big play here. And as I said, uh, great throw, great timing. Got to control it. Can't let that ball be stripped even if you know you're going out of bounds. So it's a gain of 13. This was a drive that was uh, aided quite a bit eventually by the Washington State defense uh, committing some penalties. It was a loop a route. Bizarre drive. It was it, like 18 plays. It was a long drive. This is a little loop route to Ricky. We have two receivers on that side. He runs a little in and out pattern. Tony hits him on stride real nice, breaks the first one, gets by a second tackler here, almost is off to the race, just can't quite keep his feet. That's a big first down in there. Uh, nice catch and run. Same play, and then he is, heads yeah. up field. We tried to go, yeah, with the same look, and again, almost just an unbelievable catch by Rick. He's extended fully, the ball's showing just a little bit too far. He's got, you know, some sore ribs, so that was a real tough effort. We get the PI here, they're holding uh, Kristen. And uh, big play, very emotional game. Homecoming and, and uh, a lot of emotions out there. Come back, again, almost the same thing. A great catch by Kristen, off the fingertips. We're having a little trouble. The ground is knocking that ball out of our hands a few times. And then we finally get a big pick, big catch and play down there. I think Chris said, I'm gonna go up in the air and make sure I, don't, I can get this one. Nobody can get it but me. Uh, makes a great catch, and one we've come to get used to from him, obviously. And with this reception, at that point he had tied Bobby Moore's mark for receptions in a career. Eventually he will break that in this game. Then you get uh, down near the goal line and uh, almost again, but pass yeah. interference again. Yeah, we get the P.I. Uh, an almost situation, and we get the field goal, which I think is a nice thing going into halftime. 
uh, gives us that 16-7 lead, puts us out distance of that one touchdown situation. Which is good. Now here's the final play of the half, and uh, ends up being a pretty good run by Madhu, but I think it also comes out being a positive for your team in that you forced yet another turnover. Great job. You watch Lamont Woods. He puts his hat right on the ball, delivers a solid lick, breaks the ball free, and uh, we get it. Unfortunately, there's no time to do anything with it right there, but I like Lamont Woods to come up and, and make some great tackles in that game. So at halftime, Oregon leading Washington State homecoming 1995, 16-7. When we get into the third quarter highlights as the Ducks start with possession of the football as we pick it up. The first drive, uh, just like you put this one either in the end zone or get some points. Uh, nice play coming out to Dameron Ricketts. Makes a nice catch and again almost gets away. The turf was a little slick and uh, everybody had a little bit of, bit of a problem with the footing. But uh, again, Dameron right here, if you can just keep that and get going. But it's a nice catch. First down, good timing throw by Tony. So on a third and 11 play. Here we're throwing, yeah, we're throwing back over the middle to Blake Spence, the backside tight end. We had used him on the throwback earlier, and we have a route where he'll come over the middle. Uh, we're rolling away from Tony's arm this time, which we do once in a while. You see Blake working on his man on the backside there. Tony, nice catch, and again, big third down conversion for us. Good games for both Ricketts and Spence in this one. And we needed that. Then we come with the underforce to Eric Wynn. Does a nice job. Probably our most productive play, actually. We used it later on several times in the stretch run. Come on, this, is, this is a great catch by Blake. He's covered very well. Extends out. Uh, beats the defender. It's off the play action fake. Uh, again, sets up uh, the field goal attempt. A little bit wide to the left. Hooked it a little bit. Yeah, it was a little high snap, too, that we didn't get. Here's that same wide screen that we had problems with earlier. Lamont Woods makes a shoestring tackle, but we've got to get that play before we get started. Uh, again, and they're moving. That's a third down conversion. We miss a tackle, and uh, we've got to hold them in those situations. And again, there was some, some confusion at times. This is a nice job by Kenny Wheaton. Great individual effort. He's got that guy, and we're trying to force him to throw hot and then rally to the ball as quickly as we can. It's a good defensive stand for you because the Cougars uh, were in scoring position but come away with no points. Right, and it's a great job. Uh, that's another coverage sack there. We have to force to throw the ball away. This is a big play, and Kenny Wheaton's right in his pocket battling for the ball. Everybody was covered there, and, and again, it was a great defensive stand. Next series for Oregon, we want to show you this play. The drive ends up stalling, but we've got to show you this one right now. Kristen McLemore with the reception on a third and 21, good for 25 yards and a school record for receptions in a career. Well, there, there's a lot of things to talk about here. One is the fact that he got the first down. That's my first goal, and, and I'm happy because that's great effort by him. Nice throw by Tony. He leads him. He's covered decently, but he makes that catch. You know, we didn't talk much about the record all week or all season. I, I think we all knew it was going to happen, and, and uh, Chris is, is gracious, enough, gracious enough in this whole thing that the team goals are much more important than individual goals. They're going to happen, and they're a product of all of us working together, and I saw him say that in the paper today. I was very happy with that in terms of the whole attitude about it. Great. Everybody was pulling for him. You betcha. Great team defense, and then a, uh, a late hit that, in my opinion, should have resulted in an ejection from the game. Uh, I think we'll see this at the very tail end of this play after it's over. Yeah, this is a great defensive effort because this guy runs around and we just have him boxed in and, and completely tackled. Way after the play, there is a late hit right here on one of our, our best football players. And again, I, I think there's no place in football for that. Obviously, uh, I said it at the time, and our guys have to, we have to stay poised. Our guys, that, that made them very mad. I obviously upset somebody to take a shot like that. So it's a big loss because the personal foul and the loss on the play, and it did fire up your guys, and it they did. see Jordan gets the sack. Reggie came in here, beats his man, nice job, got him in the pocket, and he just uh, wrestles him down, says, you're not getting away from me this time. So 16-7, to 7, end of the third quarter, Oregon with the lead. We go into the fourth quarter, the game is still up for grabs, Washington State trailing Oregon 16-7, to 7, but the defense will come up with the big plays in this quarter. We started off with Washington State on the move in the fourth quarter, trying to close to within one score. Gain of 12 there on the pass by Davis. And then later on, first and 10 at the 26. Yeah. BJ and Rule and, and the whole group, Des Bird, nice job on the counter play. Uh, getting out there, blowing it up from the outside. Paul Jensen taking out the interference. And then again, uh, BJ and Rule, Bird, Schmidt, all of them right there. 
So second down and 10. Davis, a little dump over the middle to Jay Dumas. Good for three. That sets up a third and seven from the 24. Great job by B.J. spying on that last one. Here's a big, big play. The ball's tipped up. Isaac is Johnny on the spot. Does a nice job here. Makes one nice cut back on the quarterback, and then it's off to the races. Does a great job, and just got to make sure that we secure that ball all the way. <laughs> and that is, without question, our play of the day. We're in what we call our Hawk package, which is six DBs. We've got our corners locked up on the wide receivers. Our dime DB is over here on the tight end. They're in a no-back set. They've got five wide receivers, basically. And uh, what we did, uh, we've got a silver, which is sort of a bracket coverage with our free safety, Isaac Walker, doubling outside to whoever of these guys would come in. Jeremy's our linebacker. He was going to sneak over and rush and force a quick throw. So we're bringing five guys, but we're going to spy this defensive end, he's going to sit here and sort of look for the quick pass inside or help on the screen or whatever. And the ball is tipped or bounces off this receiver running a slant. Isaac picks it out of the air and comes right down here. Gets uh, really doesn't get a lot of blocks. He makes a lot of this on his own. Does a nice job of cutting back on the quarterback and gets that ball in the end zone. It's a great play and a very timely play for us at that point in the game. Indeed it was. Let's take a look at it again as uh, Davis throwing. And you see the ball will actually look Looks like it hits off the receiver's uh, arms or hip. Yeah, he's covered so well by Kenny, he's, he's losing sight of the ball, and I think it bounced off his arm or back hip right up in the air. And again, Isaac's right there. Great play. Uh, makes that, sets up this nice cutback right here. Uh, makes Chad Davis miss, who's a great athlete. And then it's off to the races. And there aren't very many people that can catch Ike, uh, give him that kind of head start. Let's see if he crosses the goal line with the ball. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to give him credit for 71 and a half yards, but he gets the touchdown. You get the point after. It's 23 to 7. Now you've extended the lead. Washington State uh, really in a, a major catch-up situation. They've got to throw the ball and on the very next play, an interception. Very first. Well, they're running a post-corner move. Unfortunately, their guy falls down, and, and uh, Alex runs the post-corner for him, and the ball's thrown perfectly to him, which is a, a great play, nice timing. Again, we get some pressure. Uh, not enough. Quarterback can sit back there like a, a Statue of Liberty, but he makes a great throw. Unfortunately, the receiver falls down, and Alex is right there, taps the feet, makes a nice play, and a great timing for it. First interception of the year for Alex Molden. Now you're trying to run a little time, maybe score again. Under force again to Eric Wynn. Nice blocking up front. They were really keen on Ricky, so we're going to get the ball to Eric any way that we can here. Come back. This is a big third down conversion. Hit Blake Spence on that pass he caught for a touchdown earlier. His one on one coverage on the backside. Makes a big, big play. Nice throw by Tony. Again, good protection. He can come out, that half roll sprint set up. And we'd worked both the inside and the outside on that backside with Blake. So again, what made it tough on the defensive back. And he almost gets this one. Uh, he knew it. He was excited about getting it, but that's a big, big play. And that sets up a field goal by Joshua Smith. Bang, that one through with plenty of distance to spare. He drilled that one. He, he was kicking very well, and again, we're very excited. Matt Bellin may be coming back, but Josh Smith is doing the job for us right now. So it makes it 26 to 7. Here's that uh, kind of pooch kick, and the Cougars have a mistake and recover by Ronnie Gibson. Great pooch kick, great recover by Ronnie, great, great awareness. And again, the key to this is getting it up real high where the the receiving team, they fair caught this last time, which we'll take that too. But here he decides he's going to try to handle it. One eye on the defense probably coming down and one eye on the ball. And again, uh, popped out. Ronnie's right there. We recover. Again, two big plays back to back for us uh, to really put the game away in my mind. Kind of ran out the clock and uh, had a field goal blocked. But you're looking at one of the heroes of the game, Isaac Walker. Big night for him as he has an interception for a touchdown and also recovered a fumble. Statistically, the first page shows you how close the game was in a lot of regards. First downs, uh, total offense. The second page shows you why Oregon won the game. Flip it over, you see turnovers, five to one, penalties, two to one almost, and return yards. I mean, you know, a lot of people forget about that, but that's part of your offense as well. 130 yards in return yards, thanks to those interceptions. And third down conversions, uh, just about a wash there. Individually, rushing, Ricky had a rough day as the Cougs did a great job. They're, they've got a very fast and physical defense. Frank Madu got over 100, but as we mentioned, 59 on the first drive, I believe. Passing, Tony, pretty good numbers. He would tell you he'd like to do a little bit better than that with some of the deep throws, but the not too bad touchdown, one interception. 
Chad Davis, uh, pretty good numbers except for the three INTs late in the ball game. Receiving, Blake Spence leading the way. The tight end, seven for 73. Kristen, four for 54. Ricketts, four for 68 as he gets back into that Oregon offense and becomes a big factor for the Ducks. And defensively, Collins getting a start at strong safety this week. A little different position for Brian. Woods with nine tackles. Asher, three tackles for losses. And Kenny Wheaton, uh, just another day at the office for Kenny. Now it's time to talk about the upcoming opponent for Oregon, the Arizona State Sun Devils. ASU had a bye week to uh, kind of lick their wounds after a very difficult loss at home to Stanford, a game that uh, nip and tuck, and I know they feel that down in Tempe they should have won that ball game. They come in at three and four. Uh, the one thing everybody has seen out of Arizona State the last two and a half years is their quarterback, Jake Plummer. He started as a freshman. Uh, this guy is really tough to defend because he can throw it, he can scramble, he's really good. He, he presents a lot of problems for the defense. We call him Jake the Snake Plumber, and that's a, a very high praise, high compliment. He can scramble, he's got a great arm, he's, he's one of the most mobile quarterbacks in the conference. He's got a great receiver in Keith Poole, who is becoming a big, deep threat. I think he averaged 20 yards of reception last year. Uh, they are a tandem that you have to worry about every game. Take a look at some highlights of Arizona State against Stanford. You mentioned Keith Poole. And the first highlight we see is he takes it the distance on a reverse, and Jake's out there setting the blocks. Watch it. Yeah. Getting him down there. I, I'll tell you what, Keith has great speed. He's a big play receiver. He's a good size receiver, too, uh, over six feet tall. And they're, and they're explosive. Chris Hopkins, they've got a good running back, uh, and they're always going to run at you and make you defend the running game, and it opens up their play action game. Bruce Snyder has always been a big believer in running the football. You need to have balance. No question about it. He's developed some great running backs there at Arizona State, and Great linemen. I mean, they're going to come at you, and it's going to be a physical game as this one was. Yeah, Juan Rogay, uh, he's, he's huge. A tackle for Arizona State. He's a house. He blocks out the side. He would fill a doorway. I guarantee I saw him. <laughs> Defensively, uh, they've uh, tried to mix things up. They uh, want to blitz and attack and things like that, although maybe they don't have the personnel that uh, Bruce wants right now. Justin Dragu, uh, one of their, he's a sixth-year senior, uh, got an 